Jean-Pierre approached the mystery of the Great Pyramid with an architect's eye. Working from the most detailed architectural plans ever drawn of the Great Pyramid, slowly his theory began to evolve. As the years passed, unnoticed by Egyptologists, he came to know the minute details of the pyramid like no one else on Earth. The $64,000 question is, how do you raise blocks all the way to the top of a 480-foot pyramid? We saw that there were real problems with either a single ramp or a spiral ramp. And lifting cranes certainly don't do the job. So how do you do it? That's the problem Jean-Pierre has been tackling for all these years. His solution still has a ramp, but it's inside the pyramid. And incredibly, according to Jean-Pierre, it's been hidden there for 4,500 years. He calculated that the slope of this ramp had to be about 7% so the men could haul the blocks up it. He also figured the ramp would have to start at the base of the pyramid and go upwards as the pyramid grew. It's not as easy as it sounds. Remember, the pyramid is not solid. Inside the Great Pyramid are three large chambers. The lowest one is called the Queen's Chamber. Above it is a mysterious room called the Grand Gallery. And on top of all that is the king's burial chamber. All three chambers are connected by passageways. Is it possible to have a ramp snaking up through the pyramid that doesn't run into one of these chambers or passageways? As he began building his computer model, he could see the ramp just 10 feet inside the smooth outer surface of the pyramid, turning level after level, all the way to the top of the pyramid. Kind of like a ramp in a parking garage. Amazingly, Jean-Pierre's ramp never hit any of the chambers or passageways inside the Great Pyramid. For the first time in history, a structural 3D model of the Great Pyramid had been built to test a theory. Jean-Pierre knew the internal ramp was a real possibility but he still had problems to solve. How to turn the blocks around the corners of the ramp? You see, the men hauling the blocks need a place to stand in front of the blocks. When they reach the end of the straightaway on the ramp, where can they stand to pull the block? Jean-Pierre's solution is to leave the corners open. At the end of each length of the ramp, a notch about 30 feet square would have been left open. This notch let in light and fresh air, but it had an even more important function. Stationed at each corner was a crane that would lift and position the block so it could travel up the next flight of the ramp. These cranes could be the machines that Herodotus was talking about. But like any good detective story, we've been saving the best for last. If Jean-Pierre is right about the internal ramp, the French team should have detected it in their 1980s high-tech survey. In the French team's published report, there is no diagram of an internal ramp. It looks like Jean-Pierre is wrong. Surely a study this sophisticated would have found evidence of something as large as an internal ramp. But 15 years after the study, Jean-Pierre was asked to meet a member of the French team who said he had some very good news for him. Dr. Bouy had heard about Jean-Pierre's theory and wanted to show him something, a diagram that the French didn't fully understand, so they never published it. Voila. C'est incroyable. This computer printout shows a low-density spiral shape inside the Great Pyramid. It's amazingly close to Jean-Pierre's drawing of the internal ramp. So years before Jean-Pierre's theory, the French may have found evidence of an internal ramp inside the Great Pyramid. 